Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea. If you are new, and if you're not new, welcome back. Um, I want to apologize first and foremost because my voice is practically gone. Um, I'm just, it is, what, it is Sunday, April 30th. It is 2 in the morning right now. Um, and I'm in Houston, Texas. Um, I attended Millions Conference um, this weekend. And clearly, your girl was screaming at the top of her lungs because woke up like this. But that's neither here nor there. Um, before we get into today's video, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not, if you're not already, um, you just hit the subscribe button below um, as well as the bell for notification so that way you don't miss an upload sometimes YouTube be playing and they don't be letting y'all know when I make a video so you want to know when I make a video especially this year so go ahead hit subscribe hit the bell for notification so you don't miss an upload um, and make sure you share these videos okay um, if they bless you in any way please leave a comment down below um, check the description box there's really good information in there as well um if there's anything that you're looking for or anything like that especially um in the testimony videos i will leave the scriptures um that i reference in the description box so that way you can go and read the bible for yourself okay don't just take my word on it read it for yourself okay and i'm kind of talking kind of low because obviously it's like two o'clock in the morning in the hotel and my voice so yeah i got my water right here all right um all right, so let's get into it. All right, so today's video is me sharing my testimony of me being a rainbow baby, okay? Now this is such a powerful, powerful, powerful testimony because one, I did not know what a rainbow baby was um for a long time never heard of it until maybe like a couple years ago and then it wasn't until maybe 2021 when i learned that i was actually a rainbow baby okay so for those of you who don't know a rainbow baby is a child um that is birthed after um the mother has had a miscarriage okay so say for instance a woman gets pregnant she unfortunately has a miscarriage right so she loses that baby but then when she gets pregnant again and she brings to full term that baby that comes after that situation is called a rainbow baby it's like a promised child okay so a rainbow baby is a term for a child born to a family that has previously lost one or more children due to stillbirth miscarriage ectopic pregnancy termination for medical reasons or death during infancy okay so in my case my mother um, had a miscarriage before she had me um, and I did not learn of this until again like I said 2021 that I was an actual rainbow baby now this is this is very significant because I have experienced tons of spiritual warfare in my life especially after giving my life to God back in 2016 right and um sometimes we can be going through spiritual warfare and you know we be facing a lot of opposition a lot of resistance a lot of attacks from the enemy and we we will know you know what i'm saying that it's the enemy it's like bro like there's no way i should be going through all this there's no way that every single time i get ready to move forward it's like something pulling me back right I want you guys, if you found if you found yourself in that position, I want you to ask your parents if they've ever ever had a miscarriage. Ask your mama if she's ever had a miscarriage or anything like that. Like, really start. I, I and I ended up finding this out kind of like just randomly. Um, I didn't even think to ask my mom about this. She just shared it with me, and the Lord gave me revelation, which I'm about to give to you. And so, yes, um, there is a lot of opposition that comes to children who are like the promised child so a little bit about my background and my story right um when i was born i am my mom's only daughter okay i'm like the firstborn daughter okay and my mom has always she's always told me that she always wanted a girl right she had the two boys remember i told you about my brother isaac that died right so after him she got married to my dad uh, they had a miscarriage and then they had me right so and she had always wanted a girl she'd always wanted a daughter like for years and years and years and years and years and they just you know happened to stumble upon <laughs> your girl you know what i'm saying like you know the lord was just like sprinkle sprinkle let me let me send you some love right so 
um, knowing that and knowing, you know, what she went through before having me, it makes perfect sense. You know what I'm saying? Why the enemy would be fighting me so hard because it's like, bro, like you was really not trying. And the fact that God had already given her revelation on the type of daughter she was going to have, like what his promise was over my life right so of course the enemy is not finna like he's not finna want that right like he's gonna fight tooth and nail to make sure god's promises don't come to pass but guess what they still gonna come to pass why because he ain't got no authority he only got the authority that the lord gives him okay and that's on a very tight leash so you better find him something safe to do that's all i know okay so where am i going holy spirit um so yes so if knowing that right the lord began to give me revelation and for this particular testimony and video he wanted me to share it from the perspective for a person or a woman i should say that is looking to have a child right maybe you are like god like i've had this miscarriage i've had th this amount of miscarriages i've had this amount of stillborns i lost a child you know all of these things right like you just had really terrible traumatic experiences as it relates to childbirth okay the lord wants me to share this revelation with you from the perspective of seeing the manifestation the evidence that number one god always keeps his promises y'all hear me y'all gonna hear me say that every every time this year okay so number one this i am the evidence that one god always keeps his promises right number two the devil is a liar okay right and and what i wanted to what god wants me to share with you is from this perspective like you see the manifestation that god always keeps his promises right you see the evidence that the devil is a liar okay so if god has promised you a thing if you have gone before the lord right um like god i, I want a son i want a daughter god i want a child right and it has not happened for you let me let me let me be the testimony okay that god will do it again right because there, there's nothing special about my mother and i right we're two individuals two you know human beings right that the lord decided that he chose to bless right the scripture says that the lord opens and closes the womb let me find that scripture because i didn't even write that down and y'all i'm literally doing this video on the spot okay the lord had told me during millions that i was that this is going to be my next video i know y'all waiting for like updates and stuff we'll get to that later but the lord already told me that this was going to be my next video um and this morning as i was spending time with him in prayer um he was like you know do the video now he always has me do it in a hotel room i don't know but I started to write these scriptures down so mm, okay oh lord all right um the first scripture that i'm gonna take y'all to is isaiah 66 verse 8 through 9 no yeah no verse 9 i'm sorry isaiah 66 verse 9 the lord says shall i bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth saith the lord shall i cause to bring forth and shut the womb saith thy god okay so in that scripture, the Lord is saying he is the one responsible for opening and closing the womb, right? So if you are a woman that is having trouble conceiving, right? You're having trouble going full term, right? Maybe maybe you conceive, but then you have a miscarriage. Maybe you conceive, but then somehow the baby is lost or whatever the case is. I want you to know that that, that is spiritual, okay? I want you to know that there is there is something that the Lord is wanting to do that the enemy is fighting you tooth and nail for, okay? Because the Lord is the one who opens and closes the womb. The devil has no authority there, right? Unless he has legal access. And in that case, you need to go to God and say, God, you made me, okay? You made this womb. You made this belly. You made this uterus, okay? You made these ovaries. What's up? What's going on? What, 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 what? Let me know what's up, right? Because he made us, right? It says... It says, um, Jeremiah 1 and 5, he tells Jeremiah, he says, before you were even formed in your mother's belly, I knew you, right? So God knew us before our even parents thought to come together to make us, regardless of who your parents are. Because some of us have parents, you know what I'm saying? Like our father raped our mother, all right? Some of us have parents where we don't know the dad, we don't know our mom, We, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of stuff. But even through all of that, the Lord already knew that, okay? He already knew how you was going to come in the world. 
right? That don't catch him by surprise. It may have caught you by surprise, but it, nothing catches him by surprise, okay? So I want you to go to God and say, God, you made me, all right? You, you made all of these organs, all of these tissues, all of these cells in here. What's going on? What's up, right? Your word says, take him back to his word, Isaiah 66 and 9. Lord, your word says that shall you bring to birth and not cause to bring forth. Shall you cause to bring forth and shut the womb? So, Lord God, why is my womb shut right now, right? Why is it shut? What's going on? Is it not the right time? Is, is the enemy got legal access somewhere, right? For some of us, the reason in which we face certain issues, right, certain things where we, where we cannot bring forth in any area of our life, but especially, we're talking about pregnancy right now. I want you to go to Ezekiel 16 and 4, okay? Ezekiel 16 and 4. And it says, I'm reading it Amplified. And it says, and as for your birth, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water for cleansing, nor were you rubbed with salt or even wrapped in cloths. Okay. So this scripture, the Lord is talking to these people here. He's telling them, he's like, okay, yes, you belong to me. Yes, you've given your life to God, blah, blah, blah. But you still ain't, you still ain't separated yourself from your kindred. You still haven't separated yourself from your family, your mama's demons, your daddy's demons, their lifestyle, your grandparents, your ancestors, right? You still trying to you still trying to con be connected to them and I'm bringing you into something new, right? So for some of us, we it's not even on us, right? We live in we live for God, we serving God, we honoring God, we worship him, we praying, we doing all these things, right? But it's still like God, you still have not done this one thing. You still have not blessed me in this one area, right? Right. Abraham prayed the same prayer in Genesis. Where is it at? Genesis 15. Right. Je the Lord told Abram, leave your daddy house, leave all them people. Come with me to a place that I'm going to show you. Right. So for some of us, we need to go back to God. In this video, you're going to hear me say this. Go back to God. OK. He is the master physician. He is the master creator. He's the master painter. He's the master artist. Okay. He, he built us. He put us all together. He knows everything, right? Don't go to this person. Don't go to that person. Go back to God. Okay. And say, Lord, what part of my life have I not been separated from my family? Right? Because there are some things we, we, it ain't even on us. It's the fact of what our parents did, what our grandparents did, what people in our family did that was dishonoring to God. Okay. Because God, he, he keeps his word, right? He always keeps his promises. So if he said in his word, right, if you do this, this, and this, I'll bless you. But if you do this, this, and this, you cursed. Baby, you need to go back and see what them, what them curses are. You need to go back and see what those blessings are. You need to go back and say, God, where, where, did, where did we dishonor you in this, in this pathway, in this lineage, right? Go back and repent for that. Even if you didn't do it, Leviticus 26 and 4 tell us that we can repent on behalf of our ancestors, Right? So go back to God, ask him, Lord, show me where we may have dishonored you, where may I may have dishonored you, Lord God, where my parents may have dishonored you, right? Repent for that, renounce it, come out of agreement with it, okay? Release the blood of Jesus over yourself, replace it with the word of God, okay? That they're like, all, I'm, I'm always replacing it with the scripture that says, Lord, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Lord, I belong to you. I've given my life to you. I've made a public declaration that you are my Lord. You are my master. Okay. So I separate myself from that sin, from those sins, whatever it is. Right. You go back to God. Right. All right. Next. Um, All right, Jeremiah 29 and 11. We know this scripture. We always use it all the time. We got a tattoo, whatever, whatever, right? It says that God knows the plans that he has for us, the thoughts that he has towards us, right? A lot of people will say, well, okay, well, if God already knows what's going to happen, why do I need to do anything? Because the devil has plans for you too, all right? We see that throughout scripture, right? The devil had a plan for Adam and Eve, okay? And clearly they followed his plan because of what we're living in right now, all right? So therefore, just like the Lord got plans for you, the devil has plans for you. Okay, so you need to be asking the Lord, okay, God, what are your plans for me? Yes, I have this desire for this child right now, but is that your will for me? Okay, because a lot of us be wanting stuff that the Lord is like, I know you want this, but that's not what I have for you. I have something different, right? It's going to be better because his plans are always better for us, right? But we need to be able to relinquish control and say, Lord, I trust you with this, right? There are a lot of people 
who have children right now that the Lord was like, that wasn't my plan for you, right? He was like, I had, I had, I had something for you, but the way in which you went about it, that was your way of doing it. That wasn't my way of doing it, right? And so we have to really be mindful of relinquishing control, not idolizing certain things, because a lot of times we will idolize a promise, just like people idolize marriage, people idolize money, people idolize all these things. We can idolize children. We can idolize being a mother. We can idolize being a father. All of these things. That what what does the Bible say in James five? It says, I believe it's James four or five. It says that our desires are what lead us astray, not God. God doesn't God doesn't tempt us. It's our own desires, our own fleshly desires. Well, God, I want to feel like I'm enough. So maybe if I have a child with this person, then he'll think that I'm enough. The devil is a liar. Baby, you already are enough because you come from God, right? You're made in his image. You got everything you need, Eve. What, do you, what else do you, what more do you want, right? Some of us need to be growing in contentment first before God could even bless us with this. And it's not even just about the pregnancy. It's about the marriage, right? So all of these things, we have to be very mindful to relinquish control. Right, say, Lord, I trust you with this. Yes, this is my desire. Yes, I know you promised this for me, God. But let me not idolize this. Let me lay it down at your feet and say, Lord, I give it back to you. Right now, the, the scripture that I'm really like um, thinking of right now is First Samuel 17 when Hannah prayed for her son Samuel. Okay, this woman had been barren for many, many, many years. Okay. And she went into the temple and was praying, right? She was praying so much that the, the man of God thought she was talking to herself or that she was drunk, okay? She was like, no, sir. Like, I'm just trying to, like, I'm pleading for my, I'm pleading my case to the Lord for a son. What did he say? First Samuel 17. I thought this was so, so powerful. He says to her, he says, oh, wait, is it? No, I'm sorry. First Samuel 1, 17. Um, so he says to her, he says, then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. All he, that's all he told her. He said, go in peace. Let me get a new battery. I'll be right back. Okay. We're back because they was playing me with the camera anyway. Um, so yes, yeah, this is all the man of God told her was he said, go in peace and the God of Israel grant you your petition that you have asked of him. Okay. And it says, she said, let, let me find grace in your sight. So she went her way. She ate and her countenance was no more sad, right? For some of us, we have been desiring a thing for years. Okay. Decades even. And it's like, you can get to a place where it's like, God, is it ever going to happen? Right. Going back to Abram, when the Lord told him he would have a son, right him and his wife sarah got discouraged because it took so long right it took a long time and and in that waiting you can get discouraged you can feel like okay god maybe maybe god doesn't want this for me maybe god didn't hear this you know didn't hear me maybe god is mad at me maybe you know what i'm saying like you can really get discouraged okay and your countenance gets sad right so your prayers change, your prayers get weak. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna just stop praying. I'm gonna just stop doing this. I'm gonna just stop fasting. I'm gonna just stop worshiping. Let me encourage you right now. Please don't, don't stop. Don't stop, okay? Be honest with God. Say, God, I'm sad right now. God, I, I'm discouraged right now. God, I, I am struggling to believe you right now, God. Encourage me, help me to encourage myself in the Lord. Be honest with God about how you feel. There's no shame in that. Okay, there's no shame in being honest before God. And when you're honest before God, say, God, what do you want me to do? Okay, don't just don't just be like, God, I'm discouraged. Be say, God, what like what can you do about this? Right. Like, what do you want me to do about this? Okay. And then um, and then it says, and they rose up in the morning early, worshiped before the Lord, and returned, and came to their house to Rama. And Elkanah knew his wife. If y'all know what that means, okay, they, they put it down, all right? And um, and the Lord remembered her. Amen. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Okay, the Lord remembered her. 
I pray right now that the Lord remembers every single woman on this video right now, right? That is watching, that is believing God for a son, for a daughter, right? I pray that the Lord remembers you, okay? And that you know that the Lord, and that you even declare that the Lord will remember you, okay? That's 1 Samuel chapter 1, starting at verse 17, okay? Now, where are we going, Lord? Oh, my favorite. Okay. Now, this is where I want to talk about that the enemy, no. Okay. We're going to go to Hebrews 10, 23. I was about to do something else, but the Lord was like, no, start here. Okay. So we're going to go to Hebrews 10, 23, and I'm going to read it in a specific translation because it, it hits different. Okay. Um, all right. So Hebrews 10, 23 in the Passion Translation, okay? It says, so now wrap your heart tightly around this, around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. What did I tell y'all? I tell y'all every single time, the Lord always keeps his promises, right? I say that. I say that. God gave me that, okay? I ain't just saying that to be saying that. It's, it's Bible, okay? God always always keeps his promises okay if he has promised you a marriage a child right a business uh whatever it is right he always keeps his promises so what must we do hold tightly to the hope that is within us what is that hope within us that is the holy spirit right if you have given your life to god you have made jesus the lord and your lord and savior right you have you have been filled with your holy spirit with the holy spirit that's the hope that is within you, right? Because the Holy Spirit is the villa of all truth. Jesus said, I'm sending, he's like, it is, it is best that I go because I'm sending you a helper. I'm sending you an advocate. I'm sending you a comforter who will be with you always. The Holy Spirit is with us always, right? Jesus had a certain time to be here on this earth before he had to go back to the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is with us always. He's on the inside of us, right? So sometimes we need to stir up our most holy faith, okay? When we're feeling discouraged, right? When we're feeling down, when our countenance is sad, stir up your most holy faith through prayer, right? Through worship, through fasting, through studying the scriptures, declaring the word of God, okay? So that you are reminded because sometimes the enemy will play with your mind. Y'all need to be putting on this full armor of God. The Lord really just convicted me about that this weekend making sure that I'm putting on the full armor of God every single day. Do not miss a day because when you miss a day, that's when an enemy comes to play. Okay. Even more. So make sure you put on the full armor of God. If you don't know where that's at, Ephesians six, I'll put the scripture here. Okay. Put on the full armor of God. Okay. R activate your most holy faith. Okay. Rely on the Holy spirit. Ask for wisdom. Okay. And remember that God always keeps his promises. The reason you got to put on your full armor of God is because again, the enemy is going to come to play with your mind. He's going to call, he's going to want to make you doubt, want to make you disbelieve, want to make all these things. Right. But if you stir yourself up in your most holy faith, reminding yourself, right? Because sometimes you be playing you. So reminding yourself, God always keeps his promises. My God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Okay. If he said it, he's going to do it period that that's just it, it is what it is okay so god always keeps his promises if he says something to you he's going to keep his word to you okay he it says it okay you need to ask god okay god what do you need me to do in this moment right if he says just take your hands off and just leave let let me have it baby <coughs> i take my hands off i i let you have it Okay. If he says, I want you to worship me in victory, right? Even before you see the manifestation, Lord God, I'm praising you in advance for what you are doing, for what you've already done, right? If you are somebody who's waiting to see if you got pregnant, baby, you better be, you better be praising the Lord every single day before that test come back, every single day before that, before that ultrasound, every single day. I don't care. You better shout in victory. Like you already got the, like you already got the, your pregnant sign on the clear blue test. You know what I'm saying? Like, God, I'm worshiping you from a place of sacrifice. God, I'm giving you a sacrifice of praise, right? Giving God a sacrifice of praise. Okay. Like 
yeah so whatever it is that the lord reveals to you for you to do while you wait do that god gives us steps right so holy spirit will tell you what to do you take the first step then he'll reveal the next step then you take that step right y'all be wanting god to give you x y and z he's like if i gave you x y and z ahead of time and told you x y and z ahead of time maybe you would be like oh i'm out because why i gotta go through all this right if the lord would have told many of you that oh yeah you have to go through a miscarriage before you got your promised child you'd be like what the heck no i'm not doing it i don't want no children but then you have been forfeiting the promise God had for you, the testimony that God had for you that was going to help somebody else, right? Because testimony, again, means God do it again. So if God can do it for my mother and me, baby, he can, he can do it for you too. Again, we're not special people. We're literally just vessels that God has chosen to use. He can use anybody. He has used anybody, right? But why not you? Let, allow the Lord to make you a miracle sign and wonder. There's a scripture in the Bible where the disciples were asking the Lord why this certain man had like this, this issue, right? Like, did he sin? Did his parents sin? Did his family sin? The Lord, Jesus was like, no, it's so that I can be glorified. So there, there can be a miracle here. For some of us, it ain't even about our parents, what our parents did, what our ancestors did, what we did. It's literally so God can get the glory, Right? And at the end of the day, we want God to get the glory because it's not even about us. It's not even for us. God, if, if you want to use me in this way, God, I say yes. That you may be glorified because at the end of the day, I don't want the glory. Okay? For some of us, we didn't even ask for all it is. It's literally like God just chose us. And we like, you know what, Lord? Amen. Thank you. We should be saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you chose to use me. Because he don't have to. Okay? Don't be entitled. Come out of that entitlement spirit now in the name of jesus okay now let's let's go to the joseph anointing genesis 37 verse 3 okay um okay so the joseph anointing this is when you are the promised child okay you this is when the rainbow baby comes right there is this special anointing that is on this child because again they're a rainbow they are a covenant child they are a child that the lord has blessed you with after all of that it's like it's like a reward for your faithfulness right the bible tells us that children are are an inheritance of the lord right they're a blessing from the lord right so you didn't went through all of this all of this turmoil all of this all of this resistance all of this opposition and now you have the promise manifested before you right there's a special grace on that child but of course the enemy is gonna come harder for you right so jo genesis 37 and 3 it says now israel loved joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors so joseph was the promised child why because his daddy had him in his old age okay so of course the dad was like oh i love you so much because you almost was not here right and, and and that's that's no shade to the other children, right? It's just y'all don't know what this man had to go through to get this child here, right? And the Lord had already anointed Joseph, right, for a specific purpose. That's why he was here. Every child that comes into this earth has a specific purpose, right? Every child that comes into this earth has a specific purpose. And as a parent, we, right, need to be asking the lord god what is the purpose for this child's life what is the destiny over this child's life jeremiah 29 11 god knows the plans and thoughts that he has towards us right jeremiah 1 and 5 god knew us before we formed in our mother's womb okay so he knows what this child will grow up to do and as parents we must steward that well okay when my mother my mother is a woman of god right when she had me the lord told her what i would be doing the lord told her the the, the anointing that is on my life right so as a parent it was her responsibility to steward that right so what did she do she brought me up in the church okay what did she do she made sure i knew what praying and fasting was okay what did she do she prayed over me she made sure i wasn't at places that i wasn't supposed to be at even though you know what i'm saying i i tried to finesse it several times okay even though i wasn't trying to do all of that what she never stopped praying okay she never gave up Okay, that's for that's for y'all parents that already got kids. That's that's wayward. That's doing whatever they want to do. Don't give up. Okay, the Lord already showed you what is on that child's life. 
It's your responsibility as his or her parent to make sure that you are stewarding, training them up in the way they should go. Don't listen, train them up in a way that you should go, that they may not depart from it. Even if they rebelling, even if they're not doing what they're supposed to do, the Lord, at the end of the day, the Lord brought them into this world. Okay. It's his, he, it's him. It's his responsibility. It's his child before it was ever yours. Okay. So don't feel like, okay, God, well, I got to do this. And I, uh, 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 Lord, I take my hands off. God, you gave me this child. So I give him, I give him and her back to you. Lord God, you, you tell me what you need me to do. And I'm gonna do that. Right. Okay. So, um, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So there was a special assignment that was on Joseph's life, right? That was not on other, other child, other children's life, right? God brought him into the world for a specific purpose, just like God is bringing your children into the world for a specific purpose. So we need to be asking the Lord, God, what is the purpose of this child that you're bringing into my, into this life, into my life, right? And then once he reveals that to you, okay, Lord, how do I steward this blessing well? Okay. And once you do that, you do that, right? And you allow the Lord to show you and to bring into full manifestation the promises that he gave you. Why? Because he always keeps his promises. Okay? So I just want to encourage you and I want to pray for you. Um, if you are believing the Lord for a child, um, I want to pray for you. And so, um, Father God, I just pray right now for every, every, every woman, Lord God, that is believing you for a child. Even every man, Father God, that is believing you for a child, Father God. Maybe they struggled with infertility. Maybe they struggled with being sterile, God, or, you know, not, not, not feeling like they have enough to bring forth what you have promised them, God. I, I cancel that lie of the enemy, God. I pray right now, God, that, that, that they, that they know that they are enough, God. That you have, that you know exactly what you placed on the inside of them, God, and how you made them to be, God. That you know who they were before they were formed in their mother's womb, God. That nothing comes as a surprise to you, God. I pray that you give them peace and contentment, Father God, in, in knowing that they are enough, God, and in you, Father God, to know that you will bring this promise to pass, God, in your timing, God. That you said in Isaiah 16, 22, that at the right time, you, the Lord, will make it happen, God. So I pray, God, that right now that they will not lose faith, that they will not lose hope, that they will not be discouraged. God, that you bring their hope back, that you give them their hope back, that this testimony, Father God, revives their faith to believe you again, Father God. And just as Hannah prayed, God, I pray that they will pray as Hannah prayed, God, that you are the one who opens and closes the womb, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that they come into agreement with what you are saying, what you are doing, Father God, that they operate on one accord as husband and wife, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, if they are struggling with any physical issues or God, any physical health issues, God, I pray, God, that you give them wisdom and revelation, Lord God, on what they can do and what they need to do, Father God, to break those things, Father God, in the name of Jesus. When you created us, there were no issues. There was no health issues, Father God. There was, God, we were perfect, Father God, but things happen along the way, God. And so I pray that you give them wisdom and revelation. And, and that you give them, even as they have the promise, give them wisdom and revelation on how to steward the promise, God. I come against condemnation, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And so, God, I pray, God, that you would, would, would continue to be a man of your word as you already are, God. That you would always keep your, that you always keep your promises, God. And so I pray that this testimony encourages them to believe that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent, God. That as they see me, Father God, that they see the evidence, God, that you always keep your promises, God. That they see the evidence, Father God, that the devil is a liar. Father God, I pray that they will that they silence the voices of, of the enemy speaking to them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. That you that you build them up in their most holy faith, Lord God. For those that don't have a relationship with you, God, I pray that they come into relationship with you, God. That they surrender their lives to you, Father God. That they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, God. That you fill them up with, their, with your Holy Spirit, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. That they may have access to these promises that you have, God. In the name of Jesus. That the enemy will not have legal access to their lives, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I glorify you. I praise you. I thank you for making me a testimony, God. That you would do it again, God, in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. All right, y'all. That's it. Okay. All right. How y'all feeling? Y'all feel good? Leave a comment down below. Okay. If this video bless you in any way, please make sure you share this video with a woman or a man who you know may be believing God for a child, may have experienced a miscarriage or whatever the case is. Um, I pray that it encourages you. I will leave the 
scriptures in the video as well as in the description box um and yeah i'm excited for what the lord will do um and yes i pray that you are encouraged and i'll see you guys in my next video bye